Hey yo, what's up guys, it's Austin here, and welcome back to a new video. Although I'm not a big fan of Apple products, I really like the aesthetics of how it looks, and I'm really interested as to what the Mac OS user experience feels like. What I don't like, however, is the price. You see, if you just go onto the Apple website and look at the specs for a Mac Mini, an i7 16GB DDR4 RAM with the 1TB NVMe SSD configuration cost a whooping $1700. Yes, $1700 without a discrete graphics card. But for those who want to use a Mac OS and don't want to pay the hefty price, building a Hackintosh would be a great option. And in this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to build a Hackintosh using the Intel NUC which costs way less. Since this is a detailed video, I divided this video up into a few parts. If you want to skip over and jump right into any parts of the process, I provided timestamps down below for easier access. Now let's get into the building process. The Intel NUC that I chose was the NUC7 i7 BNH. It has 4 USB 3.1 ports, a HDMI port, micro SD card slot, Ethernet port, and a USB Type-C port. For the RAM, I got two 8GB DDR4 Corsair Vengeance RAM. And for the SSD, I went for the 1TB Samsung 970 EVO M.2 SSD. So just a reminder, the 970 EVO Plus doesn't work as it may cause issues during installation. So do not purchase the 970 EVO Plus if you're going to use that to boot up your Hackintosh. With the SSD being $180, the RAM being $96, and the NUC being $450, it'll add up to be around $726, which is $1,000 cheaper than the Mac Mini with very similar configurations. If you want it to be even more cheaper, lowering down the SSD to 500GB or making the RAM 8GB would decrease the price even further without hindering much performance. Now we have all of our components, let's add the RAM and the SSD to the NUC. Let's open the box for the NUC. As you can see, these are the accessories that comes with the NUC. Flip the NUC to the back side and unscrew the four screws. When you feel that all screws are loose, just pull them up as shown. After opening, you should be able to see the SATA slot. Lift the SATA bracket to reveal the motherboard. Now let's install our Samsung SSD. After unboxing the M.2 SSD, locate a screw that is located beside the back I.O. Then unscrew the screw and insert the M.2 SSD into its designated slot. After that, press it down lightly and screw back the screw to secure it in place. After installing the SSD, now let's install the RAM. Like installing the SSD, just slide them into the RAM slots and push them down. But this time you'll hear a click. That's when you know it's locked in. Do it for the other RAM as well. Alright, now you're done with the build process. Screw back the back screws and also remember to swap the power adapter head depending on the wall plug you use. Alright, so moving on to the installation process which is the most crucial process out of all steps. I'll divide this process into two sections. Pre-install, which is preparing the files to install, and post-installation, which is installing drivers and making the Hackintosh boot without an USB. The links for the guides that I use will be in the description down below. Be sure to check them out if you have any questions. Also, in this guide I'll be doing a vanilla install, so UniBeast and MultiBeast would not be used. In short, you would need to create a bootable USB that allows you to install Mac OS on your SSD. To make a bootable USB, you will need a few things. An old Mac or a virtual machine, in this case I'm using my sister's old MacBook Air, a USB drive, in this case I'm using a 64GB USB but I think at least 16GB would suffice. You would also need Clover and Clover Configurator. Both program links are in the description down below. You would also need a macOS installer that's either obtained from the Apple website or from an outside source. Now for those who use other languages for the Mac or virtual machine, set it to English because some errors may occur when using another language. So download Clover and unzip the package. After that, keep hitting continue 
and change install location to your USB. Hit customize, check the first two options, expand UEFI drivers by hitting the triangle, add Aptio Memory Fix 64, Partition DXE64, and the themes if you want them. Hit install and enter your password if you have one. Now that you have the bootloader installed, now you have to install the macOS. In this tutorial, I'm going to install High Sierra because it supports NVIDIA Pascal cards if I were to add an eGPU in the future. Unlike Mojave where you can only use specific AMD graphics cards that are supported by Apple. According to the guide by Rehab Man, he used the Create Install Media approach, which requires you to download whatever version of macOS in the App Store first, and then type in this command line in Terminal to install macOS onto the USB. The issue for this method is that when downloading older versions of macOS, say Sierra, it only downloads an installation shell which contains only a few megabytes of data and not the whole OS that's usually a few gigabytes. To prevent this from happening, I use the High Sierra patcher since I'm installing High Sierra. If you're going for my approach, download High Sierra patcher which is linked down below, open it, and then on the top bar, hit tools, download macOS High Sierra, and I already downloaded it so I didn't click yes, but if you guys are downloading for the first time, click yes. After downloading the macOS installer, click on the icon to browse the directory. By default, it should be under applications. Hit open and select the USB that you want to install it in. Depending on your USB speed and the USB port that you're using, it'll take some time. To view progress, hit the triangle beside verbose output. After that, you should see an EFI partition. If not, open Clover Configurator or downloaded it if you haven't, and then under Tools, you will see Mount EFI. Click on it and mount the EFI partition from your bootable USB. After installing macOS, you will have to install some KEXT files. If this is your first time doing a Hackintosh, KEX files are pretty much essential drivers that provide extra code and commands to be run upon booting. Anyways, I provided all the KEX files that you'll need in the description down below. Go to the directory EFI, Clover, KEX, Other, and drop in all the KEX files that I provided. For more specific details, the Rehab Man guide that's linked down below provides additional KEX for specific hardware. After installing all your KEX files comes the last step of pre-installation. Now you have to download your config file from the link down below and paste it onto EFI Clover. Remember to rename it to config.plist. After that, you're done with this part. Now you have your bootable USB and you're ready to install macOS. However, before installing macOS, you have to open up your BIOS by booting your Intel NUC up and hitting F2. Then you will be in the BIOS screen. I didn't update the BIOS, however, I double checked some settings in the BIOS menu. Under memory information, my 16 gigs of RAM was detected and being run at 2133 MHz, which is the Intel NUX limit. Under devices, video, I made sure that my IGD minimum memory and IDG aperture size is set to the max. Under performance, processor, make sure that the active processor cores are set to all. Under security, make sure execute disable bits is checked and under boot, secure boot is unchecked. After that, hit F10 to save and exit. Now plug in your USB into the NUC and boot it up. In the Clover bootloader, hit boot macOS install from your USB. Wait for the Apple loading bar to load and when this screen appears, hit disk utility. If you see the continue button, proceed that first. Select your language, continue. Now under macOS, you may be wondering, where is my SSD? Well, you would have to format it into Apple's desired format. So go to disk utility and select your SSD. In this case, it'll be my Samsung 970 SSD. Keep the format and scheme of the same name and name it whatever you want. For those who want to use APFS, choose APFS in format. 
macOS will start installing and this will take some time, so just kick back and relax for a bit. After that, it will automatically reboot and you will now see a new option in the bootloader named boot macOS from your drive name. After that, it should be easy as it's the same process when installing a regular Mac. For the step, your internet connection, you will need internet, so hook up your ethernet cable. Now you should be able to boot into macOS and you're almost done. Now you will need to transfer the EFI files from the USB to your SSD so it can boot without a USB. To do so, download Clover Configurator and mount both EFI partitions from the USB and the SSD. After that, replace the SSD EFI folder with the one you have in your USB. And that's it! You have successfully made a Hackintosh. Before you move on, I have some important issues to point out that I've been experiencing. So for those who use a 144Hz monitor and try to get that refresh rate, you would have to buy a USB Type-C to DisplayPort adapter. Keep in mind the Hackintosh would not detect anything if you hot plug a Type-C USB or adapter in the Type-C port. To fix this, you would have to reboot in order for the Hackintosh to detect it. Upon booting using DisplayPort, the colors may seem a bit washed out. So just simply go to Preferences, Display, and Colors to choose your color preset for whatever you want. The Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip that's soldered onto the NUC isn't supported by macOS, so you would have to buy a USB Wi-Fi dongle and a Bluetooth dongle. For the Wi-Fi, I'm currently using the TP-Link AC1200. As for Bluetooth, I'm currently using this Bluetooth USB dongle that I can't pronounce its name. Both Wi-Fi and USB dongles would be linked down below in the description. The next error that I experienced is more of a graphics error. When using Logic Pro, upon opening an empty project, the Hackintosh crashes and reboots, making it kinda impossible to work on Logic Pro. The fix was to change some values in the config file, and I somehow made it to work. Check out Rehab Man's guide for how to change your config file. Also, in the default preview app, opening up pictures may look like this. Although scaling it to a 1 to 1 resolution of the monitor resolves this problem a bit, after a few seconds of browsing, the Hackintosh crashes and reboots. A quick fix to this issue is to use a third party photo viewing app. In this case, I use ACDC Pro. However, like I mentioned in the Logic Pro issue, if you guys experience graphical issues, I would recommend using Rehab Man's Guide, which is linked down below. Also, for some reason, I'm unable to use AirDrop, despite turning on AirDrop via command line. If you guys have any solutions, feel free to comment in the comment section down below. As a bonus for those who happen to use the exact same model as I do, you can use the code by Rehabman which fixed most of my issues, or if you can't even boot up successfully again, you can use my current EFI which is going to be linked down below as well. So now, let's see how this Hackintosh performs using some benchmarking tools. Running a test through Cinebench gives us a score of 921. I also did a test in Geekbench 4, which results to have a single core score of 4,888 and have a multi-core score of 9,693. Of course, gaming using the NUC isn't impossible. I do not know a lot of games that supports macOS, but I tried running Minecraft in medium settings with a block distance of 10. On average, you can get around 110 to 150 FPS, which is pretty good. For better game optimization, I would recommend dual booting Windows using Clover Bootloader, which I will probably show you guys in the future videos. If you guys have any benchmarking tests that you guys want to see, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. So for those who love macOS but hate the hefty price tag, this should fulfill your needs for a Mac. As of right now, it currently can boot up on its own without a USB, supports HDMI and DisplayPort for a higher refresh rate, all USB ports, even the USB Type-C, audio jack and audio from HDMI works, Intel Iris Graphics 650 is detected and accelerated, App Store works but haven't tested handoff yet, sleep, restart, and shutdown works perfectly, and with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules, it works as intended. 
Also, big shout out to the Hackintosh subreddit for being so helpful during my Hackintosh process. If you have any questions regarding Hackintosh related issues, feel free to go on their subreddit, and people will be more than willing to help you out. So I guess that's it for this video. Hope you guys find this informative. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.